Good afternoon, good morning and good evening wherever you are watching this video. I'm David Pickering. I'm your presenter for today for augmenting your ITSM with AI and automation. Thank you for joining us here on this session for the next 15 to 20 minutes. During this session it will be recorded so if you do want to watch this later you can come back and capture catch up on the recording or you can share it with your colleagues who may have missed it. Also, if you do have questions during this session, please put them into the, the Q&A chat, uh, chat box and we will I'll attempt to get to the answers of answering these questions within the time frame we have, but we may not necessarily get through all of them. So thank you for joining and I hope I can get to all your questions as we go through this session. So welcome today. As I said, my name is David Pickering. I'm a senior technical marketing engineer with Avanti. I'm based out of Melbourne, Australia, and I have the pleasure of joining you today to give you this session. Before we get too far into this session, I wanted to ask a question of everyone here who's joined us. You're obviously interested in the topic, but what I really wanted to know before we get too far through it was, are you currently using any AI in your ITSM environment? So I'm interested to know, we've got a little poll that's appeared here. Yes, you've got some sort of AI ticket classification in your environment, so you've currently implemented that. No, you haven't put anything in place or you are planning to implement this and this is why you've turned up for today's session. So if you could just quickly go through and answer that poll, that would be great. Um, that just gives me a chance to know whether anyone's actually done it and hopefully I can answer any, if you have done it, maybe I can answer some questions you haven't thought of. And if you haven't done it, then certainly I hope that you'll come out of this session with a bit more understanding of that particular idea. So hoping we get some answers there. As I said, this session's about 15, 20 minutes. We'll be just one on slide that we're going to talk through before we jump into the demonstration. This is very much a demonstration session. And I hope that you do get a, quite a lot of information out of it. And we'll look at a couple of different topics as we go through this. So the first one we're really going to look at is, you know, within your ITSM environment, what is AI and how do you use that from a ticket classification side of things? We'll touch a little bit on how you get AI working. And then the second part of that will be augmenting that with the automation side of the discussion. And we'll just... A lot of people are answering their questions, so I'm not too surprised by the answers, but I do like to see that, you know, that there are a few of you, 5% of you have implemented some sort of ticket classification or AI within your environment. So great. Thank you for, for going through that process, and I hope that it was nice and easy for you. Um, not surprisingly, most of you would know, and that's why you would have jumped onto this session, I'm assuming, and you are planning to implement it. So let's hope I can address the, the questions that you have and why you jumped onto this session today. So the one slide that I want to walk through is you know, why AI and automation? It's really sort of why would you jump onto it and why would you look at AI and automation? And one of the key factors, particularly around the artificial intelligence and the ticket classification, is improve the accuracy of your data. You know, typically when an incident or a, even a service request, but we'll talk about incidents in this particular scenario, when an incident comes into your system, you know, it might be classified by the self-service portal and you've got some sort of means of classifying it, but if it comes through any other means, you've got a service desk agent trying to work out, now well, how do I classify this? And one of the worst scenarios you ever get in a service desk environment is you have someone classifying it as a category of other, for example, because they have no idea. And improving the accuracy of data certainly makes a lot more sense because when you start to look at reporting and you're looking at the accuracy of that information, you start to see incidents getting classified correctly. You start to see them appearing in the right way from a reporting side of things. And one of the good things about it is you get the correct classification first time. Now, using AI, because it's learnt and machine, using machine learning behind the scenes, you've learnt about what it is that it should look like and it classifies that incident correctly the first time. And what that helps is automate that assignment of incidents. So the incident can get assigned automatically to the correct team rather than, again, someone having to make a decision on who should this go to. You know, if it's a database issue, yes, it should go to a database team, but is it the SQL Server team, the Oracle team, 
the MySQL team, then you can get classifications to be more correct from using artificial intelligence and the machine learning to do that. What it also helps from an AI side of things is start to build out some automation, some capabilities around smart recommendations back to you. So whilst knowledge articles will be correct on the classification, it also means that you can start to introduce things like what automation routine should I correctly have allocated to that incident to solve that? So should I run this automation or should I just do a desktop, you know, remote desktop? And we'll look at that in the demonstration and say, and what we call our neuron healing capabilities is come back with recommendations to correctly say, these are the recommended ideas of what you should run to resolve this issue for that user. And what ultimately that happens is reduce your resolution time. And the re resolution time can be reduced by one, it's going to the, rec the correct team to work on it. But if we're also correctly coming back with recommendations on how to resolve the issue, then we can improve that resolution time, which ultimately improves the employee experience. Employee experience will improve because that resolution time is quicker. It's first time, it's not going through multiple different teams to go and try and resolve this. And we get a better employee experience overall. And the final part is better reporting. You know, if we're correctly classifying information, we can start to understand the reporting. We start to understand where the majority of our issues are. And we can look at potentially maybe we need to resolve, you know, address certain areas where we're getting a lot of issues in certain areas. So that's why AI and automation. That's, you know, and you may have different ideas on how that might go as well. So what we're going to do is look at a demonstration and show you how our ticket classification or our AI, which uses machine learning to build its model and automation can help you proactively resolve those incidents. And proactively means you know, as a service desk technician, how can I do that quickly? But it can also be a means of identifying issues before the user even knows they've got an issue and escalating that to the service desk and looking at it from an employee experience or using their desktop and how do I get a better experience my users and running the system. So we're going to go and jump into our demo and look through that and drive that. And what you're going to see here is we're going to, we're in now Vanti ITSM solution and we're going to go through and go through that classification process to start with. And we're going to look at ticket classification first and that will start to touch on our automation side of things and then we'll finish in the automation space. So what we're going to do is, first of all, we're going to create an instance. I'm just, as an end user, I'm just creating this as an incident. I'm just going to go through and let's say someone's called up and we've got an incident of some sort. So it might be our demo data, Alan Taylor. Most people would know him from our organisation if you've seen that before. And let's say our slow. That might be typically what you type in at that point. What happens automatically is that we using our ticket classification, we automatically determine that this looks like it's a desktop service issue. And we also look at this as a performance issue. So straight away, we've classified this particular incident to say, these are the problems we believe it's or categories this is. And what you'll also notice is we've also classified this to the correct team. So we've all, straight away we said it needs to go to the desktop support team. And that machine learning will look at what are we looking at in there. So it's looking at the core information. So effectively think of machine learning as I'm going to look at your summary and information and descriptions and go, what do you typically resolve this as? So when you have resolved these issues, for a PC is slow, for example. And the good thing is you don't necessarily have to spell it correctly or we'll do that analysis. What do I typically categorize that as? And typically you'd categorize it as service and category. And as it learns and gets more information, that accuracy is going to be much higher from that point. And it also learns that we know what team we need to link that to. And one of the other things you'll see on this right-hand side is this neurons for healing options will start to appear on the right hand side to say here's some options because we've a little bit vague on our description there but if we start to get a little bit more accurate on that we actually start to get a closer neurons for healing automation recommendation we'll look at that in a little while now just because we've highlighted that and we've gone through that if we change that what you'll see is we automatically adjust our service and category 
So straight away, because we've changed our summary of the information that we have, we've gone through and changed the service and category, and you'll also see that we've changed the team as well. So the ticket classification is always looking at what you've got there and we're always refreshing. So if you do go and change something in there, um, maybe you misunderstood the person as you're typing it in, maybe the, script, the sum, description or the summary was wrong, we'll adjust the service and category automatically based on our machine learning and AI capabilities. And we also look at the team and go, we're going to have to adjust that as well because this service and category has automatically changed in its own right. And then you'll also see on that right hand side those neurons for healing recommendations that we have will adjust based on what we have and the information we have in there. So how do we get machine learning into the system? So it looks fairly simple from a demonstration side of things. You're sort of thinking to yourself, okay, well that looks great. I've got the service and category, but how do I get my information into the system? What we do there is we take your data. So effectively, if you've got an existing service desk environment, and you've got lots of resolutions around service and category, what teams work on it, the summaries. You export that information into a CSV file and you load it into our machine learning and we run data through that. Now, in some cases, there might be things that you don't want in machine learning. So if there's a whole lot of categories of other in there, you might go, look, look we've got to clean that up and either get the categorization correct or not. So I'm within Avanti Neurons Within the Avanti Neurons is a machine learning lab. And what we do is we just load a model into that machine learning lab. I'll just look at an existing one. We basically load that CSV file in and we ask it to go through a, recommend a, a training process. And that training process is going to look at what's my data look like? Can I accurately categorise information? So if we've got... 10 records, we're probably not going to do that well out of the categorization at that point. But if we've got hundreds of records and you've got a nice mature system, it gives us the ability to then get a better accuracy of what information we have. And we come back with results. So before we want to deploy it, we want to make sure that we understand, you know, what is our accuracy? And that training system will start to go through that process. So it gives us a view of what's that look like? And we want to have something that's 80% of the training data is available. We don't want to have 40% of the information is accurate because that's not really good results for us. We get 80% or more. We've got a good way of looking at that. If we look at the accuracy on the, the other side of uh, percentage of correct predictions made during it, you know, this is just how often have we got that right. So we can tell the machine within the service test when we get a categorization, we say this wasn't correct, we want to adjust that slightly. So we can actually look at that information, and keep track of that. And then how often do we use that? And we can look at different information there to sort of say, you know, if I've got different training models, I can look at well, how well we've gone with that information. So we might not have been that good on what the data was that we put into the system. What we want to do is get that accuracy of information. And once we've got a good model, we then deploy that model. So then we use that and you can refresh it over a period of time, but it will continue to learn and, and keep track of the information you have. So it's fairly straightforward on getting that done within the system. This background just to say I've got machine learning turned on and I'm talking into my Avanti neurons environment, but the core of that is getting to that information. Now, what about the automation side? So we've looked at the ticket classification and we've looked at how easy ticket classification is. Now let's look at the other side of that, which is doing that automation and what does that mean? So I'm going to create, that, create an incident again. Use my friend Al. Actually, I'll use myself because I've got a machine attached to it. And again, we're going to say the PC is slow. Now, in this particular demo environment, I don't have the everything quite set up there. Classification. I'm going to link my CI. And we can see we come back with performance issues or other related 
data that we might be working against. So we can run particular details, looking at different data. Put those performance issues again. And we could just put performance zone. We have different recommendations in there. So these recommendations, as we talked about, typically when you're an incident, you'd go and look at your related items and say, okay, what's the knowledge article that I need to work on? In here, we can look at, maybe I want to run one of these now and actually go and execute that. And I can say, right, I've got all the information. I think that's the correct thing based on what's been talked about. So I'm going to save and execute. So we're saving the incident and we're executing the browser or the actual um, new healing bot behind the scene. Now you can run these uh, independently. So if at a later point you want to run any of these neurons healing bots, you can run those. And a healing spot is going to process against that particular device at this time. So let's have a look at what the device is going to see because when we execute that, there's different ways you do it. You could just run it in the background and have no one know that it's run, but you might want to have the user have some interaction with that particular um, healing bot that is running at that time. So let's have a look at what the user might be going to see on their desktop. So we're on the desktop and we should start to see in a minute as we're going to get some interaction there. So they might be working away on their desktop, um, running, and what they do is I'll be maybe have a Microsoft Teams message will pop up. And we get a Microsoft Teams question pop up here. And what we want to do is, is that IT support te technician, just because they've called it in, we don't want to run it without telling them. So they might be using their web browser, for example. So we can have, you know, performance issues being identified. Do we want to fix that? Or we can say yes or no. If we say no, then we'll just come back. We'll just say like, okay, that's fine. We can come back and run this at another time. In this particular case, we're going to say, yes, we do want to resolve that. And this healing bot is going to be interactive. And I'll show you a healing bot as to what that looks like and what we can do with that healing bot. Then we have another question because people have multiple browsers and they might be, they might use Firefox as their favorite. And that's the one they're talking about or Chrome or Edge. In this case, we're going to say, we want to clear Chrome. And then it's going to run through and clear the browser cache for Chrome. Now we could have had another option there, which is say, I want to clean all my browser options out of there. You can choose the, the information you want. So we're trying to be interactive within this and how we get that information to the user. And that will be running as we go through that. What we'll do is have a look at what that looks like from, what does a, a neurons healing bot look like within their system? So we're going to come into, of anti neurons, I'm going to look at our workspace neuron spots, and here's my clear browser data. And this is what we've been executing. And we're still just going through, we can look at that, we're still just going through the process of clearing my browser data. But let's have a look at that in a bit more detail. So, the first thing is we just touch the, the desktop and say, okay, just give me some information around the desktop to make sure we can do this. We have our interaction, which is the Microsoft Teams one. So we've got our yes, no answer, and I'll go in and edit this in a minute. We then say, okay, yes, we are wanting to do that. We have our other question, which is what's my browser? We want to set it's Chrome, and now we go through it, and we're going to want to clear the browser data to go through the process. And as we end up, we'll actually end up closing out this particular request. Now let's say, the good thing about this is you can configure this and look at the data as you want it. So you can configure any part of this. So my Microsoft Teams interaction, I define what the message is, what the questions are, what are the buttons that I want to have interacting there? How do I filter that result? So we're just looking at the user response from Teams. I have my next question, which is, okay, I want to do some more confirmation. Um, we come down here, the clean browser data is just based off that result, but you can have different options there to say, do I want to do everything? And then we have another interaction there. On the left-hand side, you have these queries that you can drag across onto here and say, this is something else I wanted to look at. Now, it might be you can have 
maybe there's something else here and you've got event logs that are saying there's something wrong with your system. I can drag the event logs across there. Maybe I want that to be the next question in there rather than that first one. So the first one will check the system. Next one, we'll actually go and check the event log. We run through. We start to look at what are we looking at? What's the event log that, we might, that we're looking at? So that's queries. So all of these queries can be brought across and you can drag them into the system. Then we have actions that we want to run. We've got the clear browser data action, or we can have other actions in there. So if we go through this and let's say we, it's an automated process that runs in the background and we want to create a service management ticket, we can say look, at the end of that, if it hasn't worked, we need to go and create a ticket and I can start to get the information that's relevant to my environment and drag that into there. So it's drag and drop. You build the workflow that's going to work for you from an automation side and you can run this within your system. We're almost, we are up for time, so I just want to finish off. When they clear the browser data, it can, first time through, it, does, it little, takes a little while to clear the browser data. It will come through and end that system. So I'm going to come back. I'm just going to come back to our presentation. Now, I know there's a few questions there which I'd like to be able to answer for you, so we'll go through and do that. Um, So the first first question that was asked there was from Brian, has the old standard of service desk should own all tickets changed? It really comes down to the process that you want to have within that. I always say, look, there's two ways you can handle this service desk could own every ticket and you could have that as your classification. Ticket classification doesn't need to change that. It's still be classified, the team owns it and you assign um, tasks to the team, the team members that you want to answer that question. Or you could have it assigned to everyone and have them sign it out to the appropriate teams. You can still report on it from a service desk. You can still track it and manage it. You can put it on your watch lists. Um, it, I often get a bit more flexible rather than being um, very strict on my definitions of how that works. Um, the question around, do we already have the Neurons platform if we have the cloud platform? Um, I can't answer that question. Depends on what how you've what you've licensed for. So you'd probably need to check with your sales trip to say, do you have the Neurons platform included in that? Um, this comes down to a licensing discussion. Um, how does the learning training process determine accurate when there are multiple teams involved in the resolution process? It's going to look at the most. So that's a good question. You know, there's probably some vagaries around that, but the majority of the time it's going to look at what's the majority of circumstances of what team resolved this. It's not going to be, I need to put two teams on this. It will look at what the owner of the team is. Uh, naturally, if it's a major issue, you could have multiple teams actually resolving that. Um, so that's it's going to take what's the team that's commonly answered that particular one. Um, from a ticket classification side, you need to be the ticket classification machine learning is in the cloud um, from a neurons healing bot. Again, that's cloud-based but can communicate with desktops, so they're not in the cloud. Now we're at a, close to out of time. So why AI and automation? Hopefully you're seen as part of this demonstration, the accuracy of your data, the correct classification first time, the automation of the team that needs to get that, but automation from a neurons healing side of things. How do we reduce the resolution times through running a neuron healing bot, reducing the resolutions, and also that should improve your employee experience. And before we finish up, so now that you've seen the demo, I know that was a very short demonstration. You've probably got 20 more questions, 100 more questions you want to answer and look at that. But how would you... I, Having seen the demo, are you now wanting to implement, say, ticket classification? And would you only do just ticket classification? Would you also look at the automation side of things um, and just that? Or would you look at both from that point of view? So if you feel like answering that, it would be great just to see whether you, what your thinking is at this particular time. I'm 
just let that go through. And I do thank you for joining me. It's a very short demonstration. Appreciate you know. There's probably a lot more uh, answers you'd probably want to have there. And I think most people are looking at the answer to both for that, which I think from my point of view, it makes sense. You know, just having the correct ticket classification is only part way to getting that reducing the resolution time, but looking at the ability to automatically execute something in the background increases that capability there as well. I want to thank you for joining me today. As I said, very short session. I hope that's given you a little bit more interest in what the session was able for you. We do have information out there, so there are some resources that are available for you to look at in a little bit more depth. If you go to avanti.com, uh, look under, look for the demo centre. We do have a, a long, detailed video of ticket classification and how it works and how we go about setting up ticket classification. So that will give you more information around that. And we also have some videos there around the, the healing bots. And we have some data sheets and other information up on the website for you to have a look at. So thank you very much for your time today. I hope it was worthwhile and gives you a little bit of a little bit of information and you can follow up a bit more. Thank you very much. <laughs>